You know, someone's job, doctor, lawyer, Indian chief, their religion, whether they're an atheist, whether they claim to be a, a Democrat or a Republican, none of these are in and from your genes. Now, the wide range within humanity of the way people have lived and died, and I'm talking about a species-specific trait, the species-specific trait of humanity is plasticity. This plasticity is sometimes known as the intellectual, right? This is this futuralness that's part of final causes, whereby humans individually and collectively, simultaneously, shape their own development and becoming. Now, final causes are in some way addressed as the final end toward which something becomes. And I do believe that Matt is right, that this becoming is itself an ongoing event. It's the final cause never ultimately achieves its end. It's more that it's an ongoing event of, of futureness that gets, I guess, ultimately attained or then abandoned. Um, it gets ultimately attained, we could say, in the case of artistic products, uh, in the case of physical or material constructions that people have, architecture. The point, though, is that much of who we are, much of what, much what motivates what we do, our agonies, our senses of joy, our reasons for doing what we're doing, we could argue that they're both in our genes and from the memes that are, I guess, just replicating here uh, with survival value and various forms of mutation. You can say all of that, but the notion of agency, as it should be understood, as it was made possible, in fact, by communication technologies, that's what needs to be understood. People need to understand that there is a kind of freedom and agency that was made possible by the literate mind, the releasement of the individual from the collective, and in some way the releasement of the individual from his or her own spell of sort of, I guess, enthrallment with acoustical resonance, the ability to see your own words at a distance and actually look at them reflectively analyze what you're going to say as opposed to spontaneously speak and then the words that you just spoke disappear. You can't really notice the contradictions in your utterances in the oral word in the way that you can with the written word. This is stuff that's been demonstrated marvelously uh, in the Singer of Tales by uh, Lord. I mean, he was able to show that these great memories that people have of oral tales, they're not to be denied, but there's lots of what were called tropist embellishments, slight variations that the people would say, no, it was the exact same song. Well, when they were tape recorded, the the proof was there. Uh, so it's it's sort of like literacy and other forms of communication technology have radically altered the human sense of agency and purpose and self-direction. And we now have various conditions of living, conditions of choice, conditions of social constructed groups to which we can align or not align that aren't like in the gene or the meme. Uh, certainly some of that could be talked about in terms of gene. And certainly there is a great insight with meme. But to reduce it to that, that's the problem. The problem is to not recognize final cause, to not recognize what is all through nature as a sort of driving toward its own becoming, but then has become liberated into a very focused, directed form. And it's natural. Humans are part of nature. We're just that part of nature to which final causes become subject to plasticity and self-individually chosen ends. The, the human is that being who can become itself in the image that it takes of itself. Uh, humans are always stuck with an idea of who they ought to be. I wonder if other animals live in the agony 
of an image of who they ought to be. Now, to say that you don't have an image of who you ought to be, I think that that's, my guess, is an unfair account. I think most of us, we want to be honest about it. Now, you could say, where does that come from? Well, it could just be a bunch of uh, there was genetic survival value in having future orientations, and someone could say, well, there's also the various memes around about uh, having a life goal and all these sort of orientations that we learn. But I think there is something larger than that. There is the onto, there's ontogeny, there is a sort of ontogenetic development that the human goes through, and there is a cosmic mystery that's going on. I look around me and I see birth, life, death, birth, life, death on many horizons and scales. I look at my body. My body has, I mean, not only is my body made up of lots, that's not me, all kinds of bacteria, but there's tons of microscopic organisms all over on my eyelashes. I can't get rid of them. I mean, you can't wash them off. They're, they're, they're living on us. It's not that you're worm food when you're dead. It's that you're a hotel the whole way along. The more that we sort of look at life itself as an ongoing blooming and a becoming we are part of that natural development, those ongoing chain of various pressures, evolutionary selection. But there is amidst all of that, part of that, you, you want to see the whole range of it, right? This is why I think Aristotle is so important. You do want to see four kinds of cause there. There are the efficient causes and the material cause. Both of those two kinds of cause work really, really well with um, both gene and meme. Meme kind of works with formal cause because you could talk about the construction of certain kinds of memes. Uh, but, but I think Dennett, when Dennett's a little bit wrong in his video uh, when he's talking about meme and earworm and how sometimes things get stuck in your head it's sort of beyond your conscious control just because of the meme's replication capacity or its ability to keep circulating that I don't know if it's true. I think there, there is that. Let's not deny that. But there's another phenomenon as well. Sometimes in the morning, you'll wake up and you'll have a song caught in your head. And it's not just any old song. The question you have to ask from a phenomenological question, sort of stance is, why that song right now? Is there a disclosure of your own mood? Like, could you tell from the song that was stuck that you were in a good mood or a bad mood? You know, that's just a very simple example of how complex the phenomena are that are more than just efficient cause and a material cause. In this case, there was a sort of formal cause where the, the artistic rendering itself has a kind of form or an image that resonates with certain people and their, their life experiences uh, in the same way that when I try to you know, artistically create something that looks like a cup in a painting... Uh, there is the idea that people who will look at that painting live in a world that have cups, right? I mean, there has to be some sort of formal relation there. But final cause, final cause should not be ousted wholesale. There really is a very important understanding of, of, trying, to un, of trying to get at how much nature is, you know, I, I think as Matt says, right, a sort of autopoetic becoming where it's continuously trying to achieve a becoming of itself and it's could be said a kind of futuralness it's not just pushed along from the past and it's not just in the present in a sort of processing there is a calling back from the image toward which we're striving it has to do with the space-time problem people who haven't adequately reckoned with the fact that the that the past is always now and it's always now but the now makes room for more than itself the now partly includes a future which calls forth the present in a kind of becoming and this in human life has become distilled down to a conscious possibility of, of the self-reflective cosmos i mean we are that part of nature that doesn't just have final cause. All nature is part of that as well. It's that we're that part of final cause, which has become most subject to plastic and deliberative manipulation. Okay, thanks.